After 30 years, a huge amount of work, hundreds of people working across this site, planning, building, deconstructing, constructing. Hamer Hall has now been reborn for the 21st century and will rightfully take its place as one of the great concert halls of the world. The most amazing thing about Hamer Hall is it's the first major makeover of a 20th century, a post-war concert hall, into a 21st century concert hall. All the other ones in Australia are still operating under the technology and systems that they've had since they were built. We need to remember that Hamer Hall opened 30 years ago, which means that it was designed between 30 and 35 years ago. So that's quite a long time for a venue to be in operation. Concert halls have changed the way they're used. The people in cities around the world use concert halls differently to they did in the 1970s. The old concrete terrace, a major demolition project, which ran over five months and involved the removal of 4,000 tonnes of concrete and almost 2,000 tonnes of, of structural steel, all of which was recycled. And all had to be done in an environment where we were continuing to provide access to the local businesses and local communities. This building is very much a part of our cultural heritage. The Arts Centre trustees didn't want it to look like many contemporary arts facilities like an airport. They wanted it to look in keeping with Grounds' original design. In terms of heritage aspects of this old lady that needed the major upgrade, the cowhide panels and the gold leaf ceilings were of major concern and a huge amount of effort went into ensuring protection requirements. Truscott's, I think, line was to actually retain some of the muscularity of the Grounds' interior and then kind of add this decorativeness to the inside that actually was the glamour side of theatre. When people go down to the stalls level bar, they will still see an interior that is based on the Truscott designs. I think we'd have been marched out of town if we got rid of the John Truscott flair. I think one of the best um, compliments that we're getting is that people who love this building and have known it for decades can't quite pick out what's original and what is new. And I think that's a great compliment to the, to the architects, to the whole team that's been involved in this. We've changed a lot, but it's quite subtle. You start to get three stories that run through Melbourne's cultural lineage, Truscott Grounds and now our addition. We've never been interested in being average or ordinary. We've always been interested in Melbourne and Victoria's leadership position. All the people in the office, all that skill they've had from lots of experience, all brought to what is a substantial institutional project in the country, really made sure that the quality was there. There's two sort of major formal elements to the new concrete work. Where it's um, curved, we're um, needle gunning it, and that will give it the sort of similar finish to the the theatre's building and some of the interior elements of Hamer Hall. A monumental, like it's going to last forever kind of look. A really beautiful sculptural plastic pour. We had 35 to 40 staff on this job. Our employees and subcontract labour force, about 1,500 people came through the project. It peaked at 270 to 300 at any time. One of the best things we did, I think, for this project was work with the Art Centre to develop a, a big 8 metre by 3 metre lift, which now means that you could get all of that scenery down to the stage level. It's not usual to have a, a big grid inside a, a, a concert hall. We needed to add a lot more flying system. All the things that allow us to suspend things over the stage. One of the aspects of the auditorium, a major aspect of the auditorium, was actually to get the acoustics to work, to address the shortcomings that have been there for a number of years. The musicians complained that they weren't hearing each other very, very well. And in order to assist the musicians in hearing themselves, circular reflectors were suspended about halfway up the, the ceiling height over the stage. The coverage acoustically from these reflectors for the musicians was a bit patchy. The discs have now been replaced with a much more solid reflector. It's a much more controlled, a much more even reflection pattern across the whole orchestra. This means that the orchestra can now hear their colleagues much more clearly. It's much easier for them to assess the complete orchestral sound. An orchestra can make a very full, rich sound very easily. But the full range of musical expression is only really achieved with the nuances and the subtleties and the possibility of creating incredibly soft sounds 
to give the contrast that a great music, musical realisation demands. The changes to the air conditioning system in Hamer Hall have meant that we've been able to create a much quieter system. And that means that the sounds that the orchestra can make are much softer before they become inaudible. We've expanded the dynamic range of the orchestra without changing the orchestra. All audience members can now experience this dynamic range and this range of sounds with much more vitality and much cl more clarity than was possible in the old hall. To try and lift the whole thing, we completely reinvented the lighting system. Truscott had had an amazing lighting system in there which failed after about six months and wasn't replaced. So to get that sense of it being like the magic cave, we worked with the lighting engineers to develop a system of cylindrical hanging lights, like lit stalactites. They actually create this sort of sense of a big, beautifully lit cavern, which uh, variously is orange, blue, whatever colour you want. And it, what it does is it actually gives a sort of vertical dimension to the room in the way that almost the European concert halls are like. The use of the colour in the seats also lifts it. The mix of music, the mix of performances and the mix of audiences that will be able to enjoy Hamer Hall is a very important factor in the development. What excites me about what's been delivered, to hear the difference in the sound, to hear the difference in the artistic experience, if you like, and to hear music as it should be heard, not how it was heard in the hall as it was. Listening to performances in there, there is a clarity to the sound that I didn't actually think was possible. Getting around is really easy. The disability access is fantastic. People will have a simple path finding, an easy way finding, so they know, oh, I go there, I go there, I go there, which it was a maze before. One of the things I'm really pleased about is that this building no longer looks scary. You can see what it looks like inside. It's bright, it's open. The foyer spaces are now really large. The fact that the concrete walls have been replaced with glass means that what was a shut building and looked closed and unwelcoming is now open. You can see people in there smiling and laughing and having a drink, which makes it welcoming. They've actually opened up the space. They can use it for a whole lot more things. One of the best kept secrets about the Arts Centre is that we have the best performing arts collection. The changing landscape in the foyers of this building create an opportunity for us to have more of our collection on permanent display. Little displays that are all peppered all over the, the public spaces with elements from our performing arts collection. So they'll take away some bit of knowledge or some bit of experience or some bit of realisation about what arts and culture means in Melbourne. As Hamer Hall has evolved to meet the needs of contemporary audiences, so have the, the works of art and other things that visitors will see when they come into the hall. One of the most significant things we've done is to commission a major new work of art, which is very much in the spirit of the whole building and the auditorium. It's not just about the hall itself, it's about all of the spaces around, the public spaces, the foyers, the area outside, the wonderful river's edge. There's the concert hall area that we're building at the present minute. When Grounds did the design, when it opened in 82, there's Hamer Hall, faces St Kilda Road. Behind it is the Allen Sweet factory, car yards, a whole river edge of industrial stuff. So Hamer Hall didn't address the river because the river was a bad thing. Now the river has become a leisure park of the city. So what we had to do was essentially rethink the way Hamer Hall sits on the river. Grounds' original idea of it being the fort on the river, the Castel San Angelo, was a critical part of that. So we retained that look of the, the fort, but the lower levels down at the river, we wanted to open them up. So we demolished that terrace that was there on the undercroft and built a new area along the edge. As we move through the building and then out into the riverside foyer, there is a real sense of moving from the last century into the 21st century as you move through into that new area. That's where we thought we could really finish off some of the early intentions of Roy Brown's work and sit this building properly in the city like it should be. 
This redevelopment has enabled the Arts Centre to actually free up its thinking about how we use this space, how we'll animate it, how we'll find different ways to engage people in it. The new Hamer Hall really introduces a major concert hall to a whole new generation of visitors because of its technology and because of its decor. It now speaks to a whole youthful group of patrons that normally, or in the past, wouldn't have gone there. It's my uh, privilege to formally now say welcome, but to formally open the doors here, invite you to join Victorians and Melbournians in the reopening of Hamer Hall. The public reaction is very important. And of course, the reaction from performers. And are they able to hear themselves? Do they feel better about performing in the building? And no one can be bothered to track. The overwhelming response that we've received from the musicians who've graced the hall so far is that they all think it's brilliant. Acoustically, it's fantastic, and they feel really connected with the audience, which they tell us means that this is a really great venue to play in. So after 25 months of Hamer Hall being a building site, and as I walk into different spaces, time and time again, my sense is that we've exceeded our expectations, we've exceeded my expectations. The auditorium has a warmth to it and a, a splendor to it that certainly it never had before. We wanted to turn a good concert hall into a great concert hall. I think all of us that have seen the emergence of this new facility and all that it can do are increasingly confident that its reputation should be able to build to a point where it is genuinely regarded as one of the top concert halls of the world. I think we've done a good job in getting the quality of the project really right. The best thank you they can get for the efforts over the last two years is to see people's reaction when they walk in and see the end, the end result. These sorts of projects don't come along that often and at the end of the day they're irresistible because you're leaving a legacy for future generations. It's kind of um, a fulfilment of all, all you work for to make sure that an institution like Hamer Hall actually gets reborn and gets another life and then can go on to, um, into the future. <laughs>